for those of you guys. Today's tutorial is the first in a series where, where I'm going to be talking about uh, physics in Game Maker Studio, how to use physics in Game Maker Studio. I've got a lot of requests of how to do this. I'm sorry to make this long to get around to, but I, I think you guys will, will find this very useful. Just so you know, Game, Game Maker Studio is a newer version of Game Maker which, which is compatible with platforms other than Windows and Mac. It, you can also make Android stuff with it and HTML, and it, it's really neat. And one of the extra features it has is a physics engine, which is something that's completely new to Game Maker. And it allows you to really make realistic, realistic looking physics very easily. It, it's very neat. So with that, let's get started with the first tutorial. All right then, so let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to make several objects and we're just gonna throw them, throw them into a room and then we're gonna see how they interact. So I already got some sprites set up. I've got different shapes here and a solid object. So that, that one's gonna be solid, it's gonna be the thing that's not gonna be movable. A couple things about the objects. I put a plus sign through the circle to, so that you can tell what's rotating. Other ones, other ones you should be able to tell what's rotating either way. And also you're going to want to make it centered. So center all of them. So make sure you have all of them. Also, also might be a good idea to make an edge edge along them so that way you can tell one shape begins and another shape ends. There's many things that are different with the physics system, using physics. One of them being that you don't use masks. What you're used to is using masks so you can click precise collision checking or you can click modify mask and you can set the mask right here. But in the physics engine, that's all taken care of by your um, fixture. That's what they call it. They call it a fixture. So we're going to go ahead and create each object, an object for each of the sprites, and we're going to set up their fixtures. So OBJ circles that we'll start with. Circle. And then you're going to click Use as Physics. Here you can talk all about their uh, physics properties. So the first thing we're going to worry about is their physics shape or the fixture. And object needs a sprite. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? So give it a sprite. And we're going to just go and make this one a circle because it's a circle. All right, and it does a pretty good job automatically setting up for you, especially if you, if you made it centered, it will be automatically set up for you. If you didn't make it centered, it'll probably look more like this. As is, you have it like that, and then you can click the edge to make it a smaller circle or a bigger circle or whatever. But that's about right. So we'll talk more about these later. For now, we're just going to set up the shapes for everything. Okay. So next is object square, object square. Set the sprite. Uses physics. Uses physics, and this one's gonna be a box. So I have to move it over over a little bit. You notice that one's off center because I probably don't have it centered. Nope, I don't have it centered. I used to have it be a smaller sprite, so I centered. All right, now now we got that one taken care of. Next is our OBJ triangle. This one's gonna be a shape because it doesn't fall into circular box. It's a modified glidden shape, and we're gonna go ahead and modify it ourselves. Alright, so two things you need to keep in mind for when you're making collision shapes. You have to make the points counter -clock, uh, run clockwise, so that so if you're making the points, you have to run, make them run clockwise like that. If you make them go the other way, it'll, it'll screw up. And the other thing is that they need to be a convex shape. We'll talk more about that later. So I'm going to need to change the vertical snap for this one. And make the shape. There you go. Just add your points and that's all good. So that one was fairly easy, but our next one's going to have some more problems. So OBJ cross. This is where we're going to start to see the limitations of, of this shape thing. So I'm going to go in and try and trace it. So just like that. Notice I'm going clockwise, which is important. And now I can't make any more. The maximum you can make is, let's see, what is this? Eight, eight points. If you want to make any more than eight points, you're going to have to do something a little more complicated. And the other thing, even if I leave it like this, it's going to say not convex. So I'll go ahead and explain to you what convex shape is. Alright, it's not in my drawing program. Let's see. So a convex shape is whenever you can draw a line between the vertices and have it be outside the shape. So let's draw a pentagon. This would be an example of a convex shape because no matter how you draw the lines, they will always be on the inside of the shape. And then concave shape is sort of just the opposite or it means that it's not convex. So you can see that many, many of the vertices, or many of the lines between the vertices are inside the shape, but you, here you have one that's not. So that makes this concave. One way I, I like to think of it is here it's sort of caving in, and here it's, there aren't any cave-ins along the edges. So that's interesting to convex and concave shape. In order for physics to work, you have to have them all be convex. All right, so let's expect Game Maker Studio. So this is concave because you can draw a line between those two vertices. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make it as close as possible using convex shape. Usually it doesn't make too big a difference, so it should be fine. Alright, so now let's go ahead and create a room. 
And we need to solid first, I forgot about that. OBJ solid. And this will at least talk about so okay, first box and go ahead and get this taken care of. It doesn't matter that the solid is, is uh centered because the reason we want it centered is that it'll rotate around the center. But we're not we're not planning on having this one rotate, so it doesn't matter. So we want to make this one static. Static means that it's not affected by physics. It will not move around. Physics doesn't affect it. So in order to do that, we give it an infinite density, which is zero. I guess that doesn't make much sense. Zero makes it an infinite density. So no matter, it has so much mass that no matter what force acts upon it, it will not move. So that makes it static. Now we have a room set up over here, and we're going to want to outline the room with our solids. Still getting used to Gamer Studio. If you want, if you want to make it, make a bunch of them. Then you're going to want to do control shift. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to, I'm going to make a control object which allows us to click and create them at our at will. So we're going to go into the step event. No, no, my bad. We're going to go into the mouse, global mouse, global left pressed. You can't see it, but it's, it's mouse, global mouse, global left pressed. And then we want to create an object. So we're just going to create circles for now, so that way I can, and I'll use a circle to show you the physics properties. So we're going to say instance create mouse x mouse y, so we're creating at the, whatever the mouse pointer is, obj circle. And I spelled circle wrong over here. Alright then, another important thing, which I almost forgot, is you need to say that the room is using physics when you create, set up a physics world. So, we're going to say room is a physics world. So, you have everything set up here. This is your strength of gravity. 10 is about right. 10, and that's in meters per second squared. Yes, meters per second squared. And then pixels per meter. That's saying that 10 pixels is 1 meter. That's how, how, that's how it works. So, one of these blocks is about 3 meters. Which that seems like quite a lot, actually. We want one of those blocks we've got one meter. So let's do one divided by thirty-two. One divided by thirty-two. Let me do that. We'll see. Alright, so if I click, nothing happens. And there's a reason nothing's happened, because I don't I didn't add the control object. Now it's in there, so we can test it out. There we go. It appears I messed up my uh physics thing, or my, um, messed up the pixels to meter thing, because it was supposed to go a little faster than that. Oh, well, as you see, it didn't react with the solid at all. And there's a reason for that as well. It'll only react with the things that you tell it to react to. So, we need to have a collision event for it. Even if we don't put anything in there, we need to have a collision event with the things we want to, to react with. So, OBJ solid, we're going to throw this thing in here and say collision with solid, and then we want it all to also collide with each other, which is why I added that part. So, that word called that collision with self. You have to, have to put at least a comment in there, because if you don't put anything in there, it'll just take it away. Let me see if I can fix this thing. Okay, I didn't like the 1 divided by 32 thing. Let's try this. 1 divided by 32 in here is 0 0.03125. There we go. Now it should work a lot nicer. Alright, so when we click, we create the ball. Just fine. Notice when they hit each other, they'll react, and when they hit the solid, they react as well. So you can see the rotation and all that. And try to get get a feeling for how much they're moving and how much they interact with each other, because when we mess with the physics properties, you'll notice it changing. Alright, so the first one is density. Density, I can, if I make it really low like that, it, that means that it weighs a lot less. This is um, density is determined is how much mass there is per so many pixels. I believe it's mass per 10 pixels. So this is saying for every 10 pixels we have that much mass. So the higher density, the higher it's going to weigh, and the bigger the sprite, the more it's going to weigh, or the more mass it's going to be. Sorry, but we're not going to notice that because only be interacting with with itself. Restitution. There is a complex physics term for it, but the way that most people think of it, and the way that the, it's explained in Game Maker is how bouncy it is, and that's mo pretty much enough for most people. So, point one isn't very bouncy. If you made it two, that'll be extremely bouncy. So let's test it out. So they should be a lot bouncier now. And I'd say they are. 
and then it gets really crazy when you add a bunch of them. So yeah, there you go, very bouncy. Let's let's go ahead and put that down. Now, collision group is something you're probably not going to worry about. What that's saying is that if you make some ob objects part of, like in this case, all the objects part of collision group zero. If you make it one, it'll only interact with collision group one. So in this case, it'll only react with itself. And then you can make multiple collision groups to, if you want to have control over what objects collide with what. So that that's how that works. It's um I think Game Maker or Yo-Yo Games recommends that you not worry about that too much because if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you can really make it take a lot more memory than than you need to, and it's not necessary in most cases. Okay. Linear damping, angular damping. This is how fast the r rotation and the linear speeds slow down. So, so the force pushes in one direction. How fast does it slow down? So if we make this, let's see. So point one is relatively slow, I guess. So if we made these both two, you should notice that they are r rotation wise and movement wise, they're slowing down very fast. Okay. So stop immediately. Maybe create another one. Let's try this. See, so notice they're rotating. They're a lot less willing to rotate than they were earlier. Yeah. So as soon as the force stops, they basically stop rotating. They don't move on at all. So that's what all these physics properties mean. Let me put this back normal. And I'll leave the density low so that you can see see what the decreased weight really means. Now let's go over to control and we're going to set this up so it'll create one of our objects at random. So I'm going to set R equal to choose uh, zero, 0, 1, 2, 3. So now 0 will be circle, 1 will be square, 2 will be triangle, and 3 will be cross. Now I'm going to set up a switch statement. So switch R, that means I can make it different things depending on what R is. And in the case that in the case that R is zero, we want to create a circle, and then we say break. Break is very important when working with switch statements, so don't forget about that. I'll explain what break does in a second, and we'll make four, four in total for one, two, three, and if it's one, we want to create a square. I believe that's how I set it up. Square, triangle, cross, square. Here we want to make a triangle, and here we want to make a cross. All right. So the thing about break is, well, oftentimes when you work with switch, you have default. So if it doesn't meet any of those requirements, what, what what do you want to do? But in this case, we don't have that. If we didn't have a default, break is very important. So if we had default and we didn't have break, it would go through zero. And even if even if it was oh, even if it was true, it would execute this and then it would move on and see if anything else fit. So if if you didn't have default, it would default be no. If you didn't have break, default would be triggered every single time because it would just it would just do case zero. It wouldn't break and move on. Do case one, move on two, three, and then it'll, it'll reach default every time. And oftentimes it'll screw you, screw you up. So make it how using break and switch statements. All right then. Oh, let me take the default away. So now it should create a random object each time. And then another thing is right now we have the circle to react with these two, but these ones don't react with anything. And rather than creating like Four collision events for each one. I'm going to create a parent and take advantage of parenting or inheritance if you use something other than Game Maker. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to create object phi or physics ob object physics, and I'm going to make everything that interacts with physics or not, not you, I guess, and everything that interacts with physics um, be part of that. So so circle. Uh, this one's parented to object phi. This one's parented to obj phi. This one's parented to obj phi, and this one's parented to obj phi. There we go. And then here we're going to take care of all the collision stuff. So basically, if it collides with, we'll say obj phi, that's another concept that's nice. That's actually called polymorphism. If you are familiar with other languages, it's um, when you reference more general cases. So anything can be referred to as object phi because they're all parented to it. There we go. So collision with physics object. So that should get all that taken care of. Now to test it out, we should be able to create anything. 
So, see, I create anything. Whoops. This, I need to have the salt parented OBJ5 as well. My bad. Because even though it, it won't be moving around, every other things interact with it. There we go. That's working working nicely. Notice that the circle, it weighs a lot less. So when I hit that triangle just now, it barely moved the triangle. And when we put how other things interact with the circle, it will push around the circle a lot more. I'm having trouble showing that right now. Oh well. Not, not happy. It's for the cross. I guess I've set up the cross weird somehow. So the cross modify the shape. That's really odd. Why would it do that? Let's go ahead and start over. Or so did that last time as well. Now the cross will be working fine. All right. So this was wasn't hard at all to to figure all this out. It. We just basically threw all these things in here, and, and they're interacting on their own accord. We don't have to do any coding whatsoever for this. So that's what's really neat about the physics system, is you can mess around with the physics like this without needing to worry about knowing physics, really, because you, you really don't have to have no physics in order to do this. So thank you for watching the tutorial. I will, I will be making more of these, talking more about how you can make more advanced fixtures, dealing with forces, impulse, uh, joints. It'll, it'll be all kinds of fun stuff. So with that on this tutorial, please rate, comment, subscribe. It really helps my channel. I always appreciate it. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. So talk to you guys later.